New technology is changing every aspect of our life and is making us question many of our assumptions. Questions like, what is art anyway? Our first guest left Vancouver to explore the intersection between new technology and art in Toronto and then New York. But she has returned teaching at Emily Carr, where she's the director of the innovative Living Labs. She is so respected for her approach to curation and for producing a new kind of art that pushes against boundaries we never even knew were there. Please welcome Kate Armstrong. Thank you so much for the intro introduction. It is so nice to be here today. Um, I, I thought I would take the opportunity to do a little bit of truth telling or myth busting or something like this. I'm gonna advance the slide so you can see my, my title. Okay. So I have the great good fortune in my life to have spent millions of hours with artists and to have been talking about them um, and working with them in a range of ways over the years. And I've also have the other good fortune of having a ton of opportunity in my day-to-day -day job and in other kinds of experience to be like working with and talking to people who are not artists. So people from social impact, people from technology, business, government, um, you know, lots of different spheres. And in a lot of those conversations, I'm the one sitting there saying, art's really important. Like, there are some things that you guys need to be attention, pay attention to in terms of art being like this vital part of, of a, building a healthy city. So when I sat down to think about what I would talk about today, I, I kind of I thought, um, you know, in the course of those conversations, there have actually been some points where I've realized there's some misapprehensions, like maybe basic, maybe even structural misapprehensions that some people have about art and maybe that artists have about themselves or what they're doing. So I just thought I'd bring forward some of those today in a bit of a light spirit. So I'm gonna start with a basic framework. So let's look at, so we have field, field of activity, right? Sphere of activity. We've got individual that's working within that field. And then we have the instantiation of the work that they're doing in that field. What does that mean? Let's look at business. There's an example. The CEO, let's say, is the individual working in that sphere. And the company is, is, is what the instantiation of work looks like in that sphere. It's Vancouver, so we have to say real estate. Real estate is there, and you know, realtors are there, and properties, or however we want to look at it. But when it comes to art, I want to say that most people would put it like this, where there's like the artist, and then there's the art that the artist makes. But this is actually kind of misaligned, and it, it weirdly it, it, it results in some misunderstandings. Like, um, I want to say, let's take a moment in the first slide to, to put art as a field and to really make this kind of bold statement that art is a job, like <laughs> it's a profession. Um, so let's start at the end, the artwork. I want to say that this is kind of for the most part what people have in their mind when they think about the spectrum of, of artistic, of, like artworks. Maybe it makes sense, you know, either you're going to a museum or you're in grade three and somebody is tasking you with making something out of popsicle sticks, um, you know. But I, I kind of also wanted to bring it forward in order to say, you know, I think w with this kind of vision of art and art activity, we're accidentally teaching ourselves that when we look at a piece of art, we're supposed to know what to think. And I'm not sure if that's the case because when people are asked what they think about something that they don't know anything about, let's say, they tend to default into opinion. Do you like it? Um, and this actually makes it easier in the end for us to dismiss art as irrelevant because, <laughs> is it awesome? Yeah, wow. Okay, so to go to, to the concept, to, to, to pinpoint the conversation on the individual artist for a second, we have all seen a tote bag with um, Van Gogh's face on it, right? We know that people like to focus on geniuses and on the individuals who are kind of active in these various spheres, but sometimes focusing on the talent or the activity of an individual actually makes it harder to understand why that activity is relevant to anyone else. So here's the example there. So there's some awesome thing made by some dude there is, wow, that guy really enjoys doing that thing. That's his obsession, or that's his hobby. And then here's where you have a little bit of a place to play. You can say, oh, well, I don't need a sculpture, 
or you can say, I actually do need that sculpture, thank you. Or you can say, um, you know, and this is the context of public art funding, well, I, I'm not gonna pay for that, that's that guy's random hobby, right? Anyway, we end up with this kind of, <laughs> right? So all of this is leading to a giant so what? It's like a giant so what when it comes to the question of like why art should matter or why it is important to our shared culture. Um, it's kind of no wonder that we've gotten ourselves a bit confused about um, this whole art thing. So <clears throat> here are a couple of more things that people, some people don't get about what artists do. So criticality, I had this conversation with a politician once, they were facing some heat from like, there was some kind of policy conversation that they were having in the, the artist community, it was like giving them some heat and they said, you know, I love the arts community, I'm like a huge supporter and they go, but why, why are artists so difficult? And, and, and I got, I get it, right? I, I understand, and, but it made me realize that I think sometimes people don't realize that, you know, it, it's actually an artist's job to like evaluate and to like press and to, you know, eviscerate in some cases. Like, we should be glad, right? This is in praise of difficult people. But it's also to say artists are practical, artists are political, and um, you know, sometimes when, they're being, when we think that they're looking like they're being difficult, it's because they're being judged by some kind of other um, discourse outside of, of their own concerns. So ambi ambiguity. Artists are great at ambiguity. It, I'm sure it makes me sound like I'm dissing them, but I'm really not when I say that. I, I wanted to bring up a slide. So here's um, to, to put together the scientific method and to put it against artistic method. Okay, so first of all, I meet a lot of people who don't even know that there is an artistic method. Okay, so we need to do better at talking about this. The scientists have that nailed and nobody argues with them at all. So what is the artistic method? I mean, an artistic method. It's like, I want to characterize it like this. You do it, and then you look at what you did in order to understand what it is that you've done. Like, this is what making is, right? And it's important because it means that artists are comfortable operating in the context of ambiguity and, and the unknown. So, you know when you meet an artist and you ask them to explain what their art is about and they look really uncomfortable and then they start using a lot of words and they say things like, I'm interested in interrogating uncertainty. Um, and, and you sit there and you go, oh, can you get to the point? And you're just looking at something that's a bunch of blue blobs anyway. And, and you think, okay, you know, like maybe they've had a little bit too much, you know, um, like schooling, um, you know. That's discourse, okay. So I think a lot of people don't realize too that there is like, there's an industry, there's a community, there's a dialogue, there's a discourse, there's complexity. There's a lot of stuff that artists are thinking about that maybe you don't know and that is okay. We can turn the situation around. If there's a dinner party and you meet somebody who's building a blockchain app and you say, oh, well, what's blockchain? And they say, it's a distributed ledger that can record transactions between two parties in verifiable um, and permanent ways. Generally speaking, you're satisfied with that. Um, <laughs> You can go to your follow-up questions with that person, but this just, my last point is to say, it's kind of not always, or ne not necessarily the artist's job to make everything really easy for you to understand. And um, I think that generally speaking, sometimes because you're using your eyes to look at art, you think people sometimes end up with the concept that it's a surface thing, that it's happening on the surface. But um, obviously you do not need to have a right of immediate understanding. You don't have to understand something in, in its fullness in the first 11 seconds of beholding something in order for it to make sense ultimately. So thank you.